Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So in today's video, I want to show you a little bit on some digital painting techniques that you can utilize inside of Procreate. So what I've done here is rough sketched out my artwork and I've got a few basic kind of what I consider flats in these various layers and you can see they're quite a mess. I'm, I'm not really the uh, most cleansely digital painter as you can notice here. Uh, but what I end up doing is I put the line work in front, I start painting behind, even though this line works pretty rough, like if I start getting rid of some of these colors here, you can see it's it's pretty, uh, you know, it's somewhat clean, but not, not as clean as it could be. Uh, clean enough for digital painting, because what I'm going to do is start painting behind the line work, and then as I proceed, I'll start painting over top. So I want to show you some of the effects that you can use here. So I predominantly came from Photoshop and Manga Studio. Uh, and I still use those pretty heavily, but uh, I'll be honest, this is this is quite uh, a great approach. This this uh, app or program is fantastic, so it, it can probably be taken over my workflow pretty quick here. Uh, it already seems to be. But anyways, uh, if you drag to the right here, you lock transparency. So if you notice in that thumbnail, I've got the maroon or reddish brown of the, the cloak here uh, painted in as a flat. I even went behind the... Um, crossbow type deal. By the way, this is uh, the Demon Hunter Girl from Diablo 3. So it was a request on my uh, Patreon and uh, I'm just sitting here working through it. So I figured I would share some of that process. So essentially by locking transparency, now I can go over here. I can grab like say this round brush and uh, under painting is pretty cool. And I could simply hold my finger over top of the existing area, select that color move the slider over a little bit to something a bit brighter uh, maybe something into here um, now keep in mind these these colors may shift dramatically as I paint uh, but I, I use this to kind of get started so the beauty of locking transparency is I don't have to worry about going outside of that confined area of the flats now it probably makes a lot of sense to start painting over the line work a lot sooner I tend to start behind the line work get majority of my effects in and then I'll paint over top of the line work I don't know why I do that it's just my particular way you know we all paint a little bit differently so essentially this is how I start the process and I'll try to figure out light source and you know say alright do I want a little bit of light over here does I want majority over here one of the first things I'll generally do will be paint the light source in the background and you can see I've kind of already defined that a little bit and the beauty of separating these on the, the different layers here is you can simply jump back and forth again I can hold selection over here I can pick a brighter maybe a little bit more yellow light source like this maybe a soft airbrush like this scale it up pretty big and I can just you know paint that light source in there a, a bit stronger now they also have these really great luminous brushes and I need to make some variations of it because there's a couple I feel that need to be a bit different shapes but the effect of them is pretty darn neat so we'll try even this nebula kind of effect and what it does you see it better on a dark but it'll it'll paint in a kind of glow effect with the with the effect itself so this can be really great for just some quick neat effects and and they're really neat um, type of brush I really uh, like using these here and there so so again, in this beginning stage, I'll go back a little bit here. Um, and remember, undo is double tap on the screen with uh, two fingers. Redo is triple tap or three fingers on the screen. And a, a huge amount of undos in this program, which is really, uh, really great as well. Okay, so the other thing that I'll tend to do um, as I'm painting this way is if I want to introduce a new color into this, but I don't want to paint over top of my existing effects say in this cowl or hood area. I can simply select by clicking the um, layer once, hit select contents, create a new layer, uh, and actually I'm at my limit of layers so let me go back a step here. So I'll unselect and I need to get rid of some of these layers and really I don't need these beginning stages here were just my sketches so I can do away with those right, uh, right now. So let me go ahead and delete those. That'll give me some more layers to work with with the color. Okay, so now I'll do that again. Select here, select contents, add a new layer. And just so you know, the reason why 
I can only select 12 layers uh, is because I'm working at a very high HD file format. Um, I can't remember the pixels, but it's a, it's a lot of data here. I like working in some of these files really high res. So if you want more layers, you just simply have to work at a little bit lower res. Uh, like, I, like I said before, I'm kind of doing this at an overkill kind of level. Okay, so I've got the hood area selected, and you can see it's kind of done this grid pattern over the rest of it. So now what I'll do is I can introduce a new color and a new effect. Let's say I wanted a bit more of that yellow light, maybe a reddish orange with a little bit of yellow, somewhere in there. Uh, let's take the soft airbrush, scroll, and I'm just clicking and pulling to the side to get to these different brushes. Uh, the other thing I want to stress about Procreate is it's got a huge amount of really effective brushes. Uh, so, you know, obviously, if you've watched any of my stuff, you know that I create custom brushes for a lot of my programs, and I'll be doing that real soon. I've actually had the urge to make custom brushes for the uh, the inking. I, I'm not a huge fan of the inking yet. It's okay, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some really good inking brushes for this program very soon. So you'll be able to find that on my, my Gumroad and things like that as, as soon as I get around to doing it. Uh, so the beauty of doing this is I can introduce a new color. I can also come over here, tap that little icon to the side where it said N, set to normal, and I can play with the blending modes of this additional color. So if I want a hot spot, I can mess around with these ads and color dodge. So there's a lot of unique effects that you can get here uh, just by playing around with the way that it affects the underlying um, colors. So, so be sure to take advantage of the blending modes because they're, uh, they're really helpful. And the other thing is just that by adding this effect over top of the layer, you can really kind of test it out and leave it there for a bit before you commit to it. Uh, so again, just to select I'll, or deselect, I'll select the uh, selection. I actually hit that and then go to the brush. Okay, so now let's do a little bit of this armor. I just want to at least show you a couple effects um, so that you understand uh, that this program really is uh, every bit as competent as something like Photoshop. The only thing I would say that you have to worry about in this in respects to Photoshop is pho Photoshop's going to be a lot more powerful. You're going to be able to do a lot of large file stuff and not worry. Uh, but that's not to discount this because essentially what happens here, uh, because this is more of an app, you just have to think about workarounds. You have to think about how to make the app work best for you. Uh, but in a sense, it's got a lot more potential in the regards of portability uh, obviously, this is on an iPad Pro. I'm using an Apple Pencil, if uh, hopefully you were aware of that. But, um, but yeah, so the portability far outweighs the the differences in the um, architecture of the program or whatever, uh, in my opinion anyways. I just see a lot of potential here. Uh, henceforth, that's why I'm doing the videos on my channel, or I wouldn't endorse it, because uh, I'm never, you know, never paid to say these things other than a few people watching the videos and that kind of thing. But... I don't in any way get paid or endorsed by, you know, Apple or Procreate or Photoshop or any of those guys. I just simply tell you uh, what I do in my uh, work and, and what I enjoy and what I don't. Um, so pros and cons, if any, if I could think of some quick ones as I'm adding these effects. Um, I would say pros to this setup is portability and overall speed of use because since it is an app, uh, since it is... Um, uh, a lighter de um, program or setup or app or whatever, uh, less architecture in the way, I guess. It's it's a bit faster. And the, the part where you jump in and start painting is extremely fast. So you can really maneuver really quickly. Uh, now, that being said, there is things that make um, Photoshop a bit quicker uh, as far as color adjustments, uh, more tools, you know, but, but if you're new to painting, this is going to be a lot faster, I would say, because it takes a while to really get used to the whole interface of things like Photoshop and Manga Studio. Uh, it's why some people will actually prefer programs like Sketchbook Pro or uh, Procreate or something like that, because since the interface isn't as advanced in a sense, uh, you can maneuver quite quickly. So, so in that regard, I would say that these are faster. And portability is huge because it also uh, sparks creativity is a, is a big one. Um, you know, when you're able to draw on the go kind of thing, you're going to be able to really, um, you know, really delve into your work and be creative. And, and I think sometimes you get stagnant uh, in your work if you're always sitting in the same place and you're, 
you know, your basement studio or wherever you're at, uh, the ability to like kind of get out and experience things uh, really helps your art. So that's another part of it. So, okay, so now I'm just trying like a soft brush and just trying to blend this. I, you know, I'm kind of having a mix here because I want to highlight on the back of it. I need some shadow on the front of it up here. You know, because this is a, a rounded kind of shoulder plate. Uh, so I need to play around with that. And, you know, just keep in mind, after I get enough of this effect in, it's only going to look so good with that sketch in the way. So then I have to start merging these inward or paint over top. I generally will paint over top for a little bit. So I'll go back to my paintbrush here. I'll pick the uh, light source color. Uh, not that one. A lot brighter. And I'll be honest, I'm not the greatest with colors. I have to really uh, mess around to get it right. Uh, adjust the brush size over here, obviously. And then just start to paint over top and slowly get rid of that line work that, uh, you know, that makes it look so so bad at this point um, but I'm a real big fan of the fact that you can just simply select on the screen and get whatever color you want so after I get enough of this highlight in and I'm trying to also again paint that that uh, edge of that line work out of the way a bit I'll get some of that in place I'll maybe hold my finger down here and select a darker tone start painting some more of that maybe I want it even a little darker and you can mix color this way because you could select the darker just press real light and then you basically are making a new color and select from that color and repeat that process and adjust your brush size. So that's kind of the part where I feel like you're, you're painting almost more, I don't want to say traditional because it wouldn't be traditional, but it's, it still has a more uh, natural feel. So if you get good at blending that way, uh, plus you're not switching between tools as much. So once you get enough of your paint on the canvas, I really recommend uh, doing that because it just kind of you start to pick up speed and again it feels a little bit more natural uh, I think so so I'll get some of these shadows on the bottom parts of the, the bezel here I'll grab the highlight again and maybe come back over to the next area of the bezel with a smaller brush and I just want to kind of start envisioning kind of this dual bezel as it goes around and then I'll start getting into that little scroll work and stuff so you see, I don't, I didn't give myself a ton of detail to work with, but in my, in my mind, you know, I, I've got a lot more detail planned for this. I don't want it to look flat and boring, so I'll just slowly kind of keep picking at it and bouncing around, and you know, and then zooming back and looking at it and trying to get the effect. Obviously, I've got lots of great reference for this character because uh, game art is, uh, is just so well done that you know, there's plenty of stuff to look at to. Uh, See how other artists have done it and things like that. So yeah, so that's essentially that. I mean, the, let me think of any other quick tips that I can give you. Because, you know, from here it's just using these same effects and bouncing around. Uh, but I, like I said, I'll just kind of recap. I recommend itemizing some things just to make your paint process easier so you can jump back and forth. And then at the end, after you get enough of your information in place, you'll start painting over top and then slowly blending things together and, and using things like smudge you know you get your smudges here I try not to use it a ton but it does come in handy every now and then uh, so I guess I can show you that real quick and that's a lot like Photoshop as well so I've got this layer over top and say that I you know want these transitions to be smoother I'll generally use a soft airbrush here but you can just grab a smudge brush you know somewhere into here and just lightly pl uh, press around and move it around and you see it works really well I just try not to use a smudge brush too much because it'll it'll kind of fight the process of leaving some texture in your work. So I, I generally will you just use the soft airbrush and use it sparingly because, again, I want to leave some of that texture in place. Uh, at first, it's always a, kind of this thing where you want to just smudge everything and blend everything. Um, but then the more you progress in painting, you realize that that's, uh, that's something that you want to just kind of keep to a minimal if you can so yeah so that's about it so essentially hopefully that's been helpful to you i didn't want this to be an overly long video there's obviously a lot of features a lot of things to cover in programs like this uh, and we'll cover more as we press on uh, but i just wanted to show you a little bit of how i'm using it to create digital paint work already and like i said i'm really excited about the future of utilizing this program to its fullest 
So if you liked the video, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And remember, you can follow me on Gumroad for my video tutorials and custom brushes. And I always appreciate the support, so thanks for that. And as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.